Hey everybody, Wayne here. It's unboxing time. Got another recon. Another box slash game. I know it's game. Just came in the mail yesterday. Um, I've been tinkering with the War of the Worlds. So go check out my un prior unboxing and playthrough videos to part one and two. I'm just putting up part two right now. But let's check out this one here and see what this game looks like. All right, open up this bad boy. Ooh, <laughs> which this is okay. So this is great for me because I like to reuse these when I trade and sell games and stuff. But it's kind of funny because oh, so this is just it's literally a Ziploc game. Operations Olympic and Coronet Solitaire from Decision Games. Um, so this is. All right, let me go ahead and get this out of the way first. Get the box out of the way. Is there anything else in here? No? Okay, so they just had the Ziploc game in this giant box filled with packing foam peanuts. Okay, hey, I don't understand company sometimes, but that's okay. That was not direct from Decision, just FYI. I don't know how they send it. This was actually from a uh, online retailer. All right, so here we go. Operations Olympic and Coronet from Decision Games. Um, I believe this was a World at War... SU number 27. I was looking at it last night. I don't have them memorized. Um, that this, and I think it was, I don't know, it was both then as well. And this was released and sold out. And it's been going for a lot of money in the aftermarket, third party market here on uh, BGG and wherever. So they decided to reprint it. This is a new release, just came out maybe a week ago, two weeks ago. Olympic and Coronet. Now, you probably know what this is about. Peanuts out of the way. All right, might know what this is about, but let's kind of look at the back too. And we'll take a closer look at all the components, but I like to take my time. Gotta enjoy it here. Oh, very cool. It's pretty standard counters. We'll take a look at those, of course. Operations Olympic and Coronet. Olympic and Coronet is a hypothetical simulation on a regiment brigade level of the planned invasion of Japan. Olympic is the planned November of 1945 invasion of Kyushu, or Kyushu, probably Ki Kyushu, the southernmost Japanese home island, while Coronet is the planned March 1946 invasion of the Tokyo Plain. As the Japanese were committed to a strict operational plan organized around the theme of an aggressive beach defense, the basic version of Olympic and Coronet is a solitaire game in which a single player controls both opposing forces. During solitaire play, you should alternately directly direct each opposing force so as to maximize the ability of each to fulfill its particular victory conditions. You will have complete control of all, over all American units, U.S., while the Japanese units will be restricted to their doctrine rules. To as great a degree as possible, those prescribe how and when Japanese units move and fight. Japanese doctrine rules fill the role of the absent Japanese player. In addition to the basic solitaire version, there are rules for two-player game and optional rules for the solitaire and two-player versions are included. Olympic, the American objective is to rapidly destroy or drive all Japanese forces from the extreme southern portion of Kyushu and to do that as economically as possible in terms of American casualty points. In Coronet, the American objective is to rapidly destroy or drive all Japanese units from Tokyo and the surrounding era, area, and to do that as economically as possible in terms of American casualty points. All right, I like the oversized bag. I, I've, I'm a fan of that. I had a game recently um, that came in the oversized bag. I'm trying to remember. I think it was from. It was. Um, which one was it? Oh, I can't remember off the top of my head. Oh, it was uh, Konigsberg from Revolution Games. It's nice to see Decision Games also packing them in the extra large bags. That way, when you take it out, it's not going to be. Oh, crazy. So, speaking of which, let's open her up. Let's get out with the show here. You guys want to look at just the front of the box? I think there's, there's pictures online of the front of the old bag, I guess, whatever. All right. Stuff out of the way. Here we go. Very cool. Okay. Whoop. Zoom in a little bit for you guys. I got to see it here. All right. Cover piece. Nothing on the back. Operations Olympic and Cornet Rollbook. book. 
SPI edition credits, World of War edition credits, and now there's a standalone version credit, I guess. There's no credits on there, but standalone version. 32 pages total, but obviously we're looking at um, some cool notes and bolts sections. Oh, that's really cool. It's been full on the Japanese ground forces for both areas, planned invasion of Japan. Okay, nature of the enemy. Oh, wow. And then, okay, so the last, um, yeah, the last 11 pages are like informational. That's really cool. I like when games like this do that. You know, here they're re-releasing this game, and or two games, I guess. They're re-releasing them, and to have informational stuff like that is really nice. It just shows they're putting a little bit more effort um, into it than just straight up reprinting, and that's it. So the actual rules we're looking at are from page one to page twenty, and it looks like okay, page eighteen. So one to eighteen, so eighteen pages of rules. That's not too bad at all. Um, looks like. Pretty standard decision games rule book. So two columns. Um, you got your headers, your numbered case system, case file system. It's called. I guess I'm not an expert in war games here, but um, not really any examples or anything. Again, kind of standard for decision games. You gotta, you have to have good reading comprehension to figure it out from the rule book. I think the best way I learn with decision games products is you know the rule book. And because then because I don't have examples, I have to push some counters around to kind of get myself um, familiar with it. So, all right, rule book. Map here. What is this? And there's... Oh, very cool. So, um, looks like okay. Within each map, they have a counter sheet. So you can see Operation Olympic here. The map folded up. We have the counter sheet four. Operation Olympic and it also comes with some extra baggies within there and then maybe some operational errata counters I'm guessing looks like it was uh, taken out of uh, I wonder if it was from one of the like a new World of War magazine or something so hmm. And then I believe looks like the same thing with the Operation Coronet map Yep, there's a the counter sheet no extra rata counters in there. And the back is the next sheet we already saw. All right, let's look at counter sheet for Olympic. And I won't show you Cornet's counter sheet, I'm sure it's fairly similar. But we'll show you the maps. All right, so take a look here. Operation Olympic, Invasion of Japan. So we're looking at half inch counters. Decently thick, um, not overboard, but definitely not the thinner. I've I've seen thinner counters. So, a little bit of old school NATO NATO symbols on all the units. Um, so we're looking at green United States, red Soviet Union. Tan is Japan, and then. Um, well, it's it for you know, although mushroom clouds, bad news for Japanese, I assume here. If I can get it to focus, <laughs> there we go, bad news, I'm shaking, okay, I'm shaking, these are the, having the mushroom clouds scares me a little bit, no, not really. Oh, I see the aircraft here, because I believe they apply uh, differential combat, I believe. And so their craft help with differential. Okay, what's the back of it look like? Okay, so back of the U.S. You know, pretty in, in the Soviet. You can you know it's got double sided for the units. Um, the Japanese, I believe, it's more of you know there's their units and then I assume maybe set up, set up location somewhere on the map there. So hazard radiation hazard for the nukes. Naval support as well. Cool. All right. Um, let's go ahead and bust out one of these maps here so you guys can get a closer look at that. All right. Here's the map for Operation Olympic. Uh, I don't have my plexi on it, so it's, you know, bulged up a little bit. You're going to want to get a plexi here. Hold it down flat. It's a paper map. Um, reasonably thick. Again, not the thickest I've seen, but 
I've also felt thinner maps that felt like they were going to tear the second you unfolded them. They should do just fine, especially under a plexi. Um, so Operation Olympic, I know, is based on the idea that, you know, this is the you know, island of uh, Kyushu. So you're trying to get up to, I believe it's up to or past this north-south boundary line right here. You can see in the red there. You land, land over here. Make your attack, move your way north. Um, once the American forces get to a certain point, that's where, that's your goal. Um, your goal is you're trying to secure the southern half of this island for the that next invasion of the plane of Tokyo. So, American objective. Okay, so American objective line is right here. Okay. Yeah, your charts on here. American casualty charts, terrain effects charts, combat results table over here. Hopefully, you guys can see that. Um, no, north that way, south that way. Let me go ahead and zoom in, or get me. Let me get the camera here. Oops. Off the thing. Okay. Let me zoom in a little bit, just show you guys the map. It looks nice. It looks really nice. It's definitely a bit of an old school vibe. I said that during my Konigsberg video. I'm, you know, I'm a newer war gamer, so a lot of my games are the newer ones. So when you go back to kind of these hex and counter ones that were maybe originally designed, um, you know, years ago, possibly decades. I don't know when the original SPI version came out. I assume it was a long time ago. Some of these games that people play came out before I was born. So. Sorry, that part's not very exciting. My apologies. Pretty standard stuff here. Um, just wanted to kind of show you guys. Zoomed in a little bit. Landing beaches, let's just say. Landing, and then when you're, you're moving your forces north, trying to get to this, see, American objective line there. Looks good though. Map is Joe Eust, I believe. Hopefully I pronounced that right. Sorry, Joe. I know he does a lot of maps, a lot of maps for um, decision games. So, let's see if I can get my camera back in the, the mountain here. All right. So, Operation Olympic and Operation Coronet. You're getting two games in this box, all kinds of goodies. Um, I'm a fan. I'm looking forward to trying this one out. Solitaire uh, with the dedicated solitaire. That's what drew my eyes. That's why I bought a dedicated dot solitaire. You know, I play solitaire war games. I play the dedicated ones, and I play ones that you play both sides. Um, so, I, but I do love when they have some solitaire rules themselves instead of just playing both sides. I know that there's an aspect aspect to that of that in this game. But there's clearly rules for actual solitaire play as well. So, well, thanks, guys, for watching, checking out this game. Hopefully, I'll get it to the table soon. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye.